This is a bonus episode. In the most recent episode of Museums and Strange Places, I took you along on my visit to the Peel Center in Baltimore, Maryland. My discussion with Nancy was so fascinating, and we covered so many topics that I just couldn't fit into the episode. But one thing I really regretted not getting to share with you in the main episode is the Peel's Ring of Fire. I don't want to give away any of the surprise, so let's just jump into this bonus episode, why don't we? magic ring of fire for you. There's a magic ring of fire? She says she hasn't turned on the magic ring of fire, so I think that kind of begs the question. What is the magic ring of fire? Okay, so this is the magic ring of fire. It is in the picture gallery, which is really the room that makes this building historically and architecturally unique. Um, because, as I mentioned, it's otherwise a federal-style townhouse, but, of course, because he was building this to be a museum, uh, Rembrandt Peel needed a picture gallery with a skylight as well to provide natural light for the paintings. Um, we it, So it's got very, very high ceilings, and so we've installed our uh, replica magic ring of fire, which is exactly the sort of gaslight chandelier that Rembrandt Peel used to illuminate his galleries um, back in the early 19th century. This was built for us, um, modeled on an original that's in the collection of the Baltimore Museum of Industry by engineers from BGE. Baltimore Gas and Electric, which was actually founded here as the, the modern company that grew out of Rembrandt Peel's gas business, and also by Dave Conrad from Baltimore Foundry Works, um, who is an absolute gas, historic gaslight expert. So it's built with, you know, the utmost of scholarship and research behind it, and I will light it for you now. Okay. <laughs> now able to light each of the 15 apertures uh, in this copper circle, this ring. Uh, Rembrandt Peel described the flames as pearls of light um, around uh, his magic ring of fire. And it's a great example of uh, this wonderful word that I think got a little bit of play thanks to Coven Smith um, and, and digital interface work uh, in the past few years in general, which is skeuomorphism. So um, skeuomorphism is when you take an interface from one technology or platform and you translate it into another medium or, or platform um, including all of the positive and the negative affordances. So, for example, uh, when uh, early websites used to take a book and put it on the website and try to replicate the turning of the pages, and it's kind of like, well, why? <laughs> um, that worked great for paper, but why try to do that in digital? This is a similar thing um, in terms of you know, early 19th century gaslight technology, where what did they know then? They knew candles. And so essentially, this is 15 candles in a circle that instead of being fed by wicks and, and wax, are uh, being fed by gas, which pi is piped through this copper ring. And so that was a big uh, hurdle, actually, to adoption of gaslight technology initially, in that, yeah, it burned much more brightly and more cleanly than candles, but it's still a naked flame. So there was not a significant improvement in terms of safety. Um, and in fact, it took some time, particularly in terms of street lamps, before they developed um, the, the mantle technology, which we can look at out in the garden, which allows the flame to be much safer, more contained, and also brighter and more energy efficient. But I have to say, skeuomorphism aside, it is a beautiful kind of light. Um, hanging here from from this very large stand, and um, I'd love to see it at night. Yeah, exactly. It's um, you know, electric light has not been kind to us. <laughs> we all look better in gas and candlelight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. 
Because of Rembrandt Peel's uh, use of gaslight inside the building, he and some business partners were able to get the contract to provide gas street lights throughout the city of Baltimore. That made Baltimore the first city in the U.S. to be lit by gas street lights, and that was really when it earned the name Light City, um, which is something it's known well, for now. Why don't we open the front door and, sure. and see, see those lights? Yeah, so we have um, five historic gas street lights um, in the building, two in front, two in the back garden, and then the fifth is actually a combination gas street light and fire alarm pole, um, which really is left over from when this building was City Hall and the fire alarm network all terminated in this building. Um, so these gas street lights have been restored for us again um, by Steve Pedry and Mike Borley, engineers at BGE, um, and by Dave Conrad of Baltimore Foundry Works. And uh, they are really running off of gas mains. Um, and uh, just down the street, about three blocks down, you can actually see the very first gas street light that was ever lit in Baltimore. And what's interesting to me about it is what a transformative technology gas street lighting was back then. I compare it to the introduction of the smartphone or the iPhone, where suddenly um, people could go out after dark and do stuff, be it work later or play later. Um, and it changed the way people worked and played in much the way that the smartphone has changed culture today. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next episode of Museums in Strange Places. All the music in this episode is by the Baltimore duo Outcalls. Find more Outcalls music, information about the Peel Center, and pictures of the museum on my website, hhethman.com. If you enjoy Museums in Strange Places, please help me keep it going by leaving a review on iTunes or sharing this episode with a friend. Interested in starting a podcast at your organization? Check out my new book, Your Museum Needs a Podcast, a step-by-step guide to podcasting on a budget for museums, history organizations, and cultural nonprofits. Your Museum Needs a Podcast is available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback, and audible audiobook.